Hello everyone, Radal Vecchio here, and we're going to get into part two of the WordPress Basics tutorial where we will talk about the media upload section and the theme section and how you can customize your design using themes. So if you remember from the last video where we went into posts and pages, I showed you that you can add media to a post or a page and anytime that you add media like that it's going to go to your media library so if you would like to see all the photos that you have uploaded you can go over to this media section and this isn't actually limited just to photos you can upload any type of file if you want to upload PDFs or it looks like they have a music icon here so maybe you can upload mp3s so this is really the area where you're going to upload all your media or like I said you might you might upload it in the post or the pages section but once it's uploaded, you can review everything that you have in your WordPress media library from here. So I mentioned in the last video that I uploaded this uh, image right here a few days ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a few new images. So let me click the Add New button, and I'm just going to drag and drop three um, free stock photos into here. And you'll see that they upload, and then once once we have them uploaded, we can click on the image and get more of the details for the particular image. We're done uploading here, so let me click on one of these images. And uh, the first thing you want to see is that we can get the URL for this particular image in here. So if I click on this, copy it, and go over to a new tab and paste it in here, the the one thing I want you to notice is the URL structure. So the images by default will go to this WP content folder under your main WordPress installation and then there's a subfolder called uploads and then after that it is organized by date so you have the year and then the month and then the file name now in addition to this main large file WordPress is also going to generate a a couple different sizes they're gonna have a a large size which is a little bit smaller than this um, a medium sized and then a thumbnail sized image so one thing about adding images to your website is that images are, are big files so if you have a website that has 10 or 15 images on one page and they're all really really big your site's gonna take a little bit more time to load so in general I'm gonna resize most photos to about maybe a thousand pixels max width before I even upload them to WordPress but if you don't want to do that, if you just want to upload the large files, what you can do is just choose the different file size that you would like to add to a particular page or post. So if I go into our one of these pages, let me go into the contact page, and I will add a image right down here. So we'll go to the add media section and we don't want to upload we want to choose from the media library which we just uploaded and I'm going to choose this file and you'll see from here this is where we can decide our alignment if we want to align left center right so I'm going to choose center for this you can link an image if you would like to link to either another page on your website or to a separate website and then this is where we choose the size so we have our full size which is 1500 pixels by 1228 and you can see that they also generate a large size, a medium size, and a thumbnail. So because I don't want to do the full size image because our screen, especially if most people are coming on maybe a tablet or mobile, they they wouldn't even see this full size. So let's just put in a large sized image on here and we'll insert it into the page. Let's update that page and take a look. So I'll click on the link, open in a new tab, and here you go. Now you might be asking um, what is the size that or what are the sizes that this original image gets resized to and we can adjust that from over here in the settings so I am going to go through these other settings later in another part of this video but let me go over to the media settings and you can see here this is where you can choose your thumbnail size your medium size and your large size and the one thing here about the thumbnail is you'll see that it's uh, 150 by 150 but normally you want to resize images that are going to be proportional in this case we're going to resize it to a square even if the image is rectangular so I, I normally like to do that I like to have the thumbnails um, at 
a square size, but this is all going to depend on where you're using the thumbnails and the design of your website. And here, as I showed you before with the URL structure, um, normally it's by default you're going to, your uploads are going to be divided into folders based on the year and the month. I think if you uncheck this, everything's just going to be lumped into that uploads folder. So there won't be any subfolders. But I normally like to uh, leave this uh, checked off where I have the month and the year folders. Another thing that WordPress has built in is the ability to create a photo gallery. So if we go back to the same page, I'm going to go back to this contact page and I'm going to delete this image for the time being. Another thing you might note here is that th this is um, what's known as short code. Anytime you see these square brackets, that's what's called short code. This was originally on here from a plugin that I deleted, so I'm just going to delete this code right now, and we'll discuss uh, plugins a little bit later. But what I want to do is go to the Add Media section, and instead of just selecting a photo from here, what I want to do is go to Create Gallery. And you can see the other options they here is Create an Audio Playlist or a Video Playlist. But I want to go to Create Gallery, and I'm going to click on four of these images. And once we do this, we can click the Create a New Gallery button. If you'd like uh, to put in captions here, you can do it. You can see this one has one. Man having, <laughs> man having be happy, sticky note on forehead. I don't know where this came from, <laughs> but I'm just going to delete that. So we have no captions on here. And you can link to the attachment page, which every media... Uh, a piece of media that you upload to WordPress has a, has a page. I don't like to do this. I mean, with a gallery, you're normally going to want to link to the full size image. So instead of linking to the attachment page, I'm going to link to the media file. And then you can choose how many columns you want. So this is going to depend on the width of your content area. If it's smaller, you might only want one or two columns. If it's large, you might want up to four or five. I'm just going to stick with three and I don't want a randomized order I want to choose my order and this is where you can choose the size so generally you're going to want to choose a thumbnail size and if you're linking to the media file then once the user clicks on it they'll see the full sized image so let me insert this gallery in here and you can see how it looks in the visual tab and if we go over to the text tab here you'll see the short code so you see the square bracket gallery the link equals file, so this is what's telling the gallery to link to the file as opposed to the attachment page. And these are the IDs of each media file. So you can see 17, 16, 8, and 15. So those are the IDs of the media files. And if we go, let me open up the media section here really quick. I'll open it in a new tab. And you'll see if we click on this image, if you look at the URL up here, you'll see item equals 16. So that is where we get the item number that we can put into here. So if you wanted to ma manually add images to this gallery, instead of going through the media section, which you can always do, you can literally just go over to the media library and grab the IDs that you want and then just add them into here, you know, comma separated. Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't have any more images in there, but I just want to point that out if you're interested in going into the text section and editing things with code. So let me go back here, we'll update this, and let's take a look at the page. And you can see how they have the uh, built-in style where when you hover over it, it, it changes the opacity. And if we click on it, it's gonna go right to the big file. And another thing that you can do, which I don't think I'm gonna get into in this video, but there's um, certain plugins out there and also code the code that I like is called fancy box where if you click on the image instead of opening up the image file itself it will open up a modal window right within this website so the user isn't navigating to a separate URL and you see that on a lot of sites but that's a little bit more advanced so I'm gonna hold off on discussing that if you'd like to look into it I would just search Google for fancy box or you can search the WordPress plugins for FancyBox. Now that we have a good overview of the media library, let's move on to the themes. And that is really where we have the most power to change our design. So I want to go back into the WordPress admin area. 
and the themes are going to be under this appearance theme section. So right now I have three themes installed and these are all the themes that are developed by the WordPress team. 2016, they do one each year. So there's 2015, 2016, 2017. They have some of the older ones that are available, but I, I'd imagine if you're using one of, one of theirs, you'll probably want to use a newer one. And the nice thing about WordPress is that since it's open source, which means that the code is freely available to, for anyone to view, they make it extensible by allowing developers to create themes and also designers as well to create these themes to change the design of your website without editing the content. So all the content, you know, your posts, your page content, your media library, those are all going to be either stored on your web server or within a database. And you have the themes, which that is the layout for your content. If we go into uh, the add new section over here in the themes, we'll be able to browse all the different themes that are available for free. In addition to all these free themes, there's also paid themes. So what, whether or not you want to use a free theme or paid theme, once again, it's going to depend on your website project. Personally, I've used a paid theme, and the company that I use is called iThemes. So if I search Google for iThemes Builder, this is the theme that I've used for, I would say, 90% of the websites that I build. And it, it may or may not be you know, the best one out there. It really depends on your opinion. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I've used it for such a long time that I've become very comfortable with how it's set up. And my process is a lot faster using this theme versus installing a theme that I've never seen before and never used before. So once again, you know, I think if you're going to build a lot of websites, you, you probably want to settle on a paid theme where it's easy to adjust the layout depending on you know, which client or personal project you're building a website for. If you're only building one website and you don't plan on building more than one, then you have a little bit more flexibility of what you want to choose. But like I said, I find that if you're going to build websites for clients or build five to ten websites over the course of the next year or so, chances are you're not going to want to use a different theme for each one because you, you might have a different process for each particular theme. So you want to kind of nail down your process. Now, if you're just learning, I would definitely recommend installing a few different themes so you get a feel for how each theme developer organizes their settings and the design. Let me go back into the free themes because I want to choose a couple free themes here. So they have the featured ones and the popular. So generally I would probably stick with one that's popular and when you click on some of these you'll see how many ratings they have. So this one only has three ratings. It's five stars. Let me go to another one here, uh, Sydney. So this one is five stars but it has 243 ratings. And funny enough I randomly came across a, a celebrity website that has a Sydney theme installed, and I believe it was James Dean. <laughs> so if I go to jamesdean.com, his official website is powered by this Sydney theme. So let me go down. I don't. I, I can't even remember how I searched for this. I think some like TV show that I mentioned, or that I was watching, mentioned James Dean, and I ended up searching for him saw that he had an official website you know me being uh, a guy that loves websites I was curious about what his website looked like and I noticed that it was developed with WordPress and if we come down here you can see that uh, it uses the Sydney theme by a themes so let's take a look at this one let's install this one and, and uh, see what it looks like so we just click the install button and then once it's installed, we have to activate it because right now I still have the 2017 theme activated. So I'm going to click activate. And another thing that you'll notice is some of the better themes have plugins that they recommend so that the theme, so it's easier to develop your design. You can see right here, this theme recommends Page Builder by Site Origin and Sydney Toolbox for custom posts and fields for the Sydney theme. So right now I'm going to just take note of these two plugins. Maybe I'll open the 
open up the URLs for them. And actually, it looks like these are um, built. These are links that link within WordPress. These don't go to an external website. So if I click on them, it's just going to open up a modal window here. And it looks like this page builder by site origin, yeah, it's got over a million active installs, 915 ratings. So this is obviously a nice, um, a nice plugin that it looks like it probably adds drag and drop functionality to designing the page. Let me see the screenshots here. And yeah, that's that's what they have right here. You can see that they kind of abstract away the visual editor and the code editor within WordPress and make it a little bit easier to build your layouts. You know what? I'm actually going to install this right now. Now that I see that it's got such high ratings, let me install it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the Sydney Toolbox. I'm just going to go ahead and install it. Now this one, it doesn't have a lot of ratings. We only have three ratings. There's two five stars and one one star. It does have a lot of active installations. There's over 100,000. So let me install this. It doesn't look like I activated either of these plugins. Just like with the themes, you have to activate the plugins. So let me just quickly drop into here, and you'll see that we don't have these activated yet. So they are installed on our web server, but they're not like the functionality of the plugin won't be available to us until we activate it. So right now all I want to do is check out a few of our pages with this new theme installed. So I'm going to go back to this contact page and this is the 2017 theme so let me refresh it and take a look at the Sydney theme. And you can see the difference here. So the first of all the header is a little bit different. It's got a different background image. We have our content area which is a little bit wider and to the left. The gallery has a little bit bigger of a space between each thumbnail and you can see there's actually no padding between row number one and row number two so that's something we might have to edit. And let me go to the home page and see what the home page looks like. And this is, this is what we saw when we originally installed the Sydney theme. So I'm sure with this we can change the background image, we can change the text here. And once again, depending on your website project, this might be a great layout for you or it might not fit what you want to do at all. So, you know, choosing a theme is very personalized. So let me just go through a couple different themes. I want to install a few different themes just so we get an idea of how they look. Let me go back to add new. And I'm going to install this Better Health one. This actually looks like it might be a good theme for, you know, a business. So let's install this. It looks like they have a different layout here under their thumbnail versus what we're seeing over here. This is more of the blog layout. So it's installed. Let's activate it. And I don't know if they registered my click on there. <laughs> So yeah, there we go. Click it again and we have it activated now. Let's refresh. And you can see that this is very basic as well. We would need to do a little bit of tweaking to get it to look the way that we just saw with the thumbnail. This tutorial isn't going to go into customizing a theme since that's a little bit more of a detailed subject. And it's like I mentioned when I first started talking about themes, the way to customize each theme is going to differ depending on the way that the theme developer created the theme. <laughs> and that's why I recommend if you're going to build a lot of websites, finding a uh, probably a premium theme that you like and sticking with it so you understand how to adjust the layouts from project to project. Now let me go back into here. One thing I want to show you is that the themes consist of uh, PHP files and a CSS file. So the PHP files are what generate the pages of the website and the CSS file is what gives the page the design and the style. So you can you can take a look at what files make up this theme by going to the appearance editor section. So if we go to appearance editor you're going to see here by default it's going to show you your style.css which is your main um, CSS design file. This is what you can customize if you'd like to 
change any parts of the design and over here these are all the files that uh, make up the theme so you can see this is the style.css we have a functions.php and there's a template for all the different uh, pages so you have an archive template a comment template a footer template uh, a home page template front page.php uh, header.php for the header and index.php which is normally the fallback if any of these aren't used first so there is like an order of precedence with the uh, template files so if it's an archive page it's gonna go to archives.php but if it's a random page that doesn't fit you know archive or uh, the home page like say and say an inner page like the about page it would likely default to either index.php or actually down here I see page.php so this is this is gonna be really confusing to you if, if you're a complete beginner and I wouldn't recommend editing these files if you don't if you think that I'm like speaking gibberish right now I would not even attempt to edit these files the one thing that you want to know is that if you're going to customize a theme you almost always want to create a child theme so as I mentioned within the update section which in the, within the dashboard update section themes and plugins are updated for security reasons and sometimes for design reasons if you were to add customizations to this file like say this style.css file you wanted to add a few lines of code to customize it if this theme developer put on an update and you downloaded that update it would overwrite your customizations so what you want to do is create a child theme that builds off of this theme you could put all your customizations within the child theme and that way you won't lose any of your customizations if you update this particular theme another section under here that you'll note is the customize section so if you want to customize with code you're gonna do it within the appearance editor there's different options to customize within this customize section and I think this is gonna depend on the particular theme so every theme has a specific set of options to customize and this is why I recommend sticking with one theme if you're gonna build multiple websites because you might come into this customize section and see something completely different for this theme versus the next theme <laughs> but if we go through a few of these you can see they have home page settings um, so we would probably have to develop the home page to put any of these into effect the top header info so right now like I as I mentioned I don't really know what some of these options do I'd have to spend a little bit of time familiarizing myself with this theme to see how I can edit this so here they have an option to edit, uh, customize the footer so if you want to change this text right here it looks like it's done through here um, we have the header image so I have no image set so I bet if I uploaded an image let me add a new image here from the image library they give you suggested dimensions so let me choose this uh, one that's a little bit wider and cropped so let me select this and they're gonna make me crop it so I'm gonna um, just kinda center this crop area click crop image and as you can see it's um, added to this section I actually thought the image would be added above here but so yeah it, like it's gonna take a little bit of time to customize it and to get it to look the way that you want so right now I don't I don't want to go through all this because this theme is gonna be different than every other theme you download so let me exit out of here and the last thing I want to mention in this part of the tutorial is that we can create our menus from appearance menus so this is independent of the themes and which any within each theme you may want to create a main navigation menu and certain sub menus so you may want to display a particular menu in the sidebar one example is you may want to do you know your most popular posts and hand select the post and create a menu of those usually for every uh, WordPress installation I create at the very least your main navigation menu so if we go in here create main navigation we'll create the menu and we can over here choose from pages posts custom links or categories so for the main navigation menu it's normally just your your top level pages and if we do view all 
you can see they have an option for the home page. I also have the home page down here, so we just need to select one of these two. And I'm going to select all the other ones and add to menu. And another thing we can do is under the menu settings here, you can select this box, automatically add new top level pages to this menu. So if we were to go into pages and create a new page, say for instance a testimonials page, with this option selected, it's going to automatically add that page to your menu. And you can also drag and drop to select the levels here. So if I want to make a sub nav menu, all I have to do is indent this and you'll see it automatically makes it a sub item. So you can do a few levels here. If you want to go you know, three levels, you can do that. Obviously for this, I'm just going to keep these at the top level. But if you remember, I mentioned the services you know, a services page where you have five or ten services listed, under here, this is where you would drag and drop them to make them a sub item of the main page. So let me save this. I'm also going to do display location primary because this is going to link it to the top menu if the theme supports that. I think that's built into the 2017 theme. I don't know if it's built into the theme we just installed. So let me refresh here and take a look if it appears over here. And it looks like, yeah, we don't, we, over here we have a home button, which actually isn't even linked, but our menu displays up here. So once again, this might vary theme to theme. <laughs> this is why WordPress can get a little bit confusing. So you have to, you have to really choose the theme that's right for your website project or right for you as a website developer. That's all we're going to do in this video. So in the next video, what I would like to get into is the widget section so how you can customize with widgets and I also want to talk about plugins how you can extend the functionality of your website using the thousands and thousands of plugins that are available to you please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already so you'll get any new WordPress or web design videos that I put out thanks everyone I'll see you on the next video